All right, we're live. Dang it, man. This is a blast. I got to admit, the nerves kind of creep up when that countdown. I've, you know, created content for how many years? Never think I've ever been nervous to hit record or anything. But that countdown starts going. The nerves and jitters start creeping in. And dang it, man. Hey, it's great to see you guys. See a few of you in the chat already. We're continuing on in this video. We're going to be breaking down my new mix template. I finally, after all these years of just having tons of different companies and just being sick of having to pay attention to all the different updates and does this crash and all that and we're just we're cleaning the slate a little you know pun intended we'll say slate digital's all access pass is going to be just about the only company i think i still have one stock plugin in this template but uh from the last video there's a few plugins that uh, I wanted to maybe get familiar with before I included them in the template. One of them was the multi-pass from the Kilohertz bundle within Sleep Digital's All Access Pass. And I tell you what, you guys are going to be super pumped on that, especially if you already have the pass. Uh, man, before we get going, maybe let a few more people get in. If you guys haven't already, there's a free event. I'm mixing a song from start to finish talking, we'll call it Mixing Theology my thought process on drums low end i'm going to feature the low end trick the tom trick uh we're just we're going to go nuts we're going to mix a song from start to finish this friday link in the description if you haven't already claimed your free spot it's completely free there's no reason not to join it's going to be a blast and uh I'll, there i go again i was showing off a plug in i forgot to switch the uh the screen i'll do that in just a second let me know in the chat if i forget but uh you guys rock for coming in feel free post questions i'm going to go through a little bit of the training that I've got in mind for featuring the template. I've replaced all of my uh, vocal effects with similar plugins. I went track by track and swapped it out for only stuff that's featured in the Slate Digital All Access Pass in the Kilohertz bundle. So super pumped to do that. Once again, link in the description for you guys watching the replay maybe. I'll get you going on uh, the free live event coming up. So there we go. Now you can see Pro Tools. I'm going to get one of those stream decks it's in due time. I'm going to try to, to go live every a couple times a month. So, hey, if you guys are enjoying this, man, definitely drop comments. Let me know what uh, what you think, what kind of content you'd like to see. And uh, I'll check in on that, and we'll add it to the list. So we've got some exciting stuff coming your way. Now let's, uh, let's dive into this template. So before, we looked at the drums, and I showed you my, you know, you got the kick in, kick out. Here's what I'm doing. Here's why. I've got a couple things that are still from me messing around with it we'll clean this bad boy up but we had the kick in the kick out sometimes we're sent a sub kick it goes to the kick level and then we just i updated that to feature uh plugins i love and use all the time and uh we went through that in the last video the only thing i don't think we covered was when i got to the tom's bus i had uh the fab filter pro mb now i experimented and i know this looks a little crazy trust me though uh, I've used these settings from the Prab Fab can't even talk Fab Filter Pro MB on the Tom's Bus for years now. It was the Waves Linear Multiband. The preset was called Floor Tom One. So if you have the Waves Linear Multiband, by all means, you got the exact uh, template right there preset. But the Prab Fab Filter, I converted that Waves plugin to be a Fab Filter plugin. And then when I went to create this template, I was like, ah, crap, multi-band uh, compressor, you know, what am I going to do? Obviously, I could have used, now that I've had some time and experimented with it, the multi-pass from the kilohertz bundle within Slate's all-access pass. This thing's a beast. Um, and you're going to see that. I've got the, the isos isotope neutron replaced by the multi-pass. And we're going to take a look at that. But what I found out was what I really enjoyed from my former multi-band compressor plug-in preset on toms really was the EQ that was taking place. The compression, yeah, I mean, it mattered, but it was more about the EQ and the shape that it gave the toms. So I've gone in and I've just replaced the FabFilter Pro MB and before it was the Waves linear multi-band with Infinity EQ. And I've given it that 10 dB boost on the bottom end. Now, this is every mix is going to be a little different. It's going to take some tweaking. But I tell you what, let me go ahead. Let's pull in some toms. Let me see if I can find some files. We got the MJ toms here. Still got these. Let me go in. I've got, we got some stuff we can feature. Let's come in here and find. I may just end up using the, the MJ so I don't keep. Yeah, we'll go Dr. Toomey. We've got my man, my brother, 
Dr. Toomey, we have his permission to use his stuff. So we're going to go ahead and pull in the toms from the track Fighting For Me. Boom. Tom one, two, and three. And then we probably have a floor tom. Let's go grab that real quick. Maybe not. So it was maybe two racks and a floor. Kick in, kick out. I mean, you're going to get the, the gist of it even without it. So we'll go ahead and we'll take these. We're going to drag them in the session. And then we'll plop these guys. Whoop. Great keyboard shortcut for us Pro Tools users. Command Option Z. You had a selection. You accidentally hit something or bump a key. Command Option Z will reselect whatever you previously had selected. So we'll throw these. Let's go. Tom one there. Tom there. OCD creeping in. You got to put them in the right spot, right? Okay. So now these toms, I'm gonna boost them by 10 dB because that's part of my gain staging, which we'll talk about probably Thursday. We're gonna go live and I'm gonna talk my updated. Very less is more. Stop overthinking it. Gain staging method. Uh, we'll talk that Thursday. But for now, let's go ahead. We're going to boost those toms. 10 dB. And let's go find us a fill. <laughs> and we still have Michael Jackson down here. So Dr. Toomey featuring Michael Jackson. Uh, we'll go turn him off. Perfect. Okay. And then for those of you hanging out with me live, will you tell me, could you hear those toms coming through? Looks like we got some yeses, some thumbs up. So hopefully that uh, might not be very loud. I could probably, let's go get you guys some level here. Eh, actually it might be fine. Okay, cool. It's hard for me. I'm, I'm still working. I'm going to get the iPad maybe and put it over here to the left for the live event so I can see your questions coming through. Right now, I've got a, a little side station, so everything's there. But Okay, cool. So that was with the processing on. Let's go take a look. Maybe loop this section over here. Where's a good fill at? We had one. Okay, so... I didn't touch anything. That's that's a template, right? So we would tweak that, but here's before. This is just the raw recording of those same toms. Sounds like a good recording, right? Um, it, I mean, it sounds pretty common to what I would get from some of the better engineers I work with. That's a good sounding drum kit. These were well recorded drums. And then you throw this on, and then without it, and it's just, you got so much of that that boxy thing, and I just, I love that scooped Tom vibe in almost every genre except for maybe singer-songwriter. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes we're boosting that, right? So it just depends on your ear, your taste, but for me, this chain without the Infinity EQ And then with it, and you just you got the body, the resonance. Obviously, we're scooping mids, and uh, these are these are the exact bands from that Waves plugin turned uh, converted to the uh, Pro MB from FabFilter, and I'm just I'm loving what uh, the EQ curve is giving me. It wasn't so much about the multi-band compression as it was the uh, the curve. So let's take a listen one more time. Can't get enough of that little bit of uh drive there that might be from this so that might be where the multi-band is helping so i tell you what let's do this kind of on the spot little impromptu thing so we've got the multi-pass here featuring the multi-band transient shaper now that floor tom was giving me a little bit too much so we have a couple of options here we could go to the floor tom this is my template so i'm not going to delete floor tom two and three mix a lot of gospel i don't want to miss out on that but <clears throat> excuse me, for demonstration's sake, we could go into the Infinity EQ on just the floor tom mic, and we could pull back where, whoop, wrong one, still learning the keyboard shortcuts, eh, right there we go, so we double click, we get that, so we can go in and just pull back a little bit of sub, let's see if it overloads now, a little bit, we can come up here a little more, 
So it's it's just got a little grit to it. But now we've made that floor tom feel like it's a part of the kit. We could you may want that, you may not. For me, I'm okay with a little bit of distortion, a little bit of grit. Uh, you're not gonna hear that really in the mix. So that's one way to handle it. The other way is let's copy over this multi-pass here. And we'll come down and instead of the transient shaper, we'll get rid of all those. And down here, we'll put a compressor. And then now we could just compress against that bottom end at a threshold that we set. I'm thinking probably medium with uh, maybe even a little slower release there. So we got to get that drop that threshold a bit more. And we can just control that on the bottom end. So this is sub 250 hertz. Quick look at that, but super flexible, incredible tool there. And actually, we turned that off. And then now this is going to probably see a little more low end. And you can see now it's compressing against it, keeping it in check probably even boosting sustain a little bit as well. So anyways, the flexibility of this, the multi-pass, mul excuse me, multi-pass is incredible. That uh, little goof on my part with my voice, probably due to lack of throat code. Let's get a little drink. Mm. Been saving me, been creating so much content, super pumped. We have all of 2022 mapped out for uh, the VIP membership. I'm not, you know, no link or anything right now for that. It's actually closed, but all that's mapped out. All of November's content's ready for you. All of December's content is ready for you. You got a sick Black Friday thing that we've got planned. I'm telling you, I've never been this prepared in my life, and I've been creating content for a long time. So uh, super pumped to, to be hanging out with you guys and have so much in store. We got a couple of team members we're bringing on to the Mix Academy. All right, we'll save that for another video. But uh, cool. So hopefully you dig that. Let me check in with you guys in the comments here. Oh, yeah. Ha, <laughs> ha. You guys rock, man. So pumped to have you with me. So we've got uh, multi-pass, just an incredible tool. Now let's show off multi-pass again. So I'm going to remove that. You can see how we had some toms. We'll go ahead and we'll delete these toms and move on. Go ahead and delete these tracks because we're working on... This is the official template for this Friday's event. If you haven't already signed up, man, we got the link in the description. we got a free live mixing event song going from start to finish. I'm going to be talking mixing strategies and techniques along the way while also mixing uh and then uh whoop Antares look at that Antares is hitting me with the guess what Antares <laughs> that was not planned at all I canceled you the reason why I canceled you is because Slate came out with Metatune and it's great so uh funny little blooper there we'll have to maybe save that and put it up it's like a YouTube short <laughs> okay moving on so uh what are we looking at bass guitar so we got to the bass and i, I feature fab I love fab filter love their stuff saturn incredible plugin but i'm doing this event with nothing but slate plugins and really a couple stock i think one stock plugin so i had to find a way to to see and, and it really pushed me to get into the the kilohertz stuff and and already a big fan of slate i use his compressors and stuff all the time those of you guys who have followed me you know that i love slate's plugins trigger and um, FG401, now the LA2A, and now the Custom Opto, and the Distressor lives on my vocal parallel compression bus. So, um, been a huge Slate fan for years and years. This stuff I'd never really dove into. And so, getting into it, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. I'm pretty stoked on it. So, uh, Fab Filter Saturn is my go to on bass. Well, not right now. It's going to be multi pass. And the fact that we have similar to what I showed you there on Tom's, I actually pulled it up but didn't talk about it. Uh, the multi-pass transient shaper, multi-band transient shaper. So I can boost the attack for stick hitting the head in the bottom end different than the mid-range. So the mid-range is going to get a little less of that. I don't want to pull forward that um, cardboard kind of thing, and I certainly don't want the stick hitting the head to feel like cardboard box. So a little bit there, but not much, and I'm pulling back sustain on the mid-range, which is also going to help relieve some of that uh, uh, decay in the mid-range. But then upper mid-range, the stick hitting the head, kind of that 2 to 6K range, uh, I'm boosting attack in the toms. Uh, so huge, huge fan of the multi-pass. As you can tell, I'm, I'm pumping it up here. But uh, same thing down in the bass. My first go-to is not compression anymore on a bass. I still compress a bass. 
Um, and it depends on the song genre, slap bass, driving pick, pop punk, rock, whatever, if it's a pick or fingers, you know, different techniques for different styles. But what I'm excited about here is I've got the, the, the most crucial kind of change I've made in my mixing of bass is using transient shaping, sustain, increasing sustain on the bottom in here. So sub 203 hertz, 200 hertz and below, I just take that sustain knob and I'm boosting it until I have what I need. And I tell you what, let's go to Dr. Toomey again. Let's go grab the bass and we'll pull him out here. And we'll show this guy off as well. Uh, I don't know if we need a boost here. Yeah, we'll get it up in the mix for you guys. Don't pay attention to my gain saving here. I'm just, just want to get it loud for you guys. So we got a, a very sub-dominant bass here. This is not, um, I don't even have my sub pack on, but this is not a... Um, upper mid-range driving cutting rock bass or anything like that so um all the more this is a great great one to feature we've got the bottom in and we'll go ahead and double click and put that back to detemp and then turn out the burp in the mic for you guys there um yeah so let's take a listen we've got the bass we'll put all this leave it alone so you can see we've got the multiple bands and we're going to go in we're just going to boost sustain in the bottom in i actually am going to turn my sub pack on. Give us some love there, some intensity. Great little spot. So what we can hear there is, um, it might be a little bit of compression to tape on this one, but I mean, yeah, so we got some dynamics. And so what I wanna do is I want that bottom end to sit pretty darn full and resonate and fill the speakers, the subs. I want that full experience down there. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with this transient shaper. Oh. Oh, that just sounds gnarly. And then what happens? Let's see if we just crank it. Yeah, I'm on, I'm feeling, oh man, I'm thinking on the heavier side, really cranking on it. Let's hear the difference. Oh. This is where I need the stream deck for some kind of like, some kind of sound effect, man. That's just insane. So, and dang it, man. And this video is not sponsored by Slate. There's no... Um, no, no connection there necessarily. This is just me knowing that I, I pulled my audience, uh, surveyed and found out that just about everyone has got the slate digital all access pass. Why wouldn't you, I forget how much it is, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. And just the amount of tools and kudos on them this year. They've really stepped it up. Tons of new plugins coming. I think they have another one dropping this week. We'll have to check that one out and maybe do a review, but um, this one, oh, the multi-band transient shaper. And so now I've got the subs, 200 hertz and below. Really the deep subs is what I'm after to just fill the speakers, right? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mid-range and we're going to do the exact same thing. Not the mid, the low mids, kind of 200 to 600. Um, so a little bit low mids crossing into the mids. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing. Um, and this is where you may use our bass from waves to get kind of the upper harmonics and generate stuff that cuts from smaller speakers. This is really gonna give you a pretty similar thing. It's not gonna create those upper harmonics, but it's certainly gonna smooth out and keep everything that's up there consistent. So let's do the same thing. Let's hit with the sustain. That first note is really where you can hear this. It's, it's short lived, but that first note is where you're gonna feel the most of this effect. I tell you what, let's mute the bottom man. Oh, it's almost like it's not a tube saturation, but that increased sustain is similar to what you get when you use saturation or uh, without the upper harmonics and all that. But dang it, man, that sustain is incredible. So loving that, the two bands... Um, and then here's why you would use multiband and not just one band. You may not want your mid-range to be as 
sustained as your bottom end. You may not want the upper part. If you have a slap base, you may want to preserve in that to be very transient, heavy, and dominant and cutting, and then your bottom end to be thick and fuller. Um, so this is why I love the multiband shaping on a bass. Let's go ahead and let's look at this top band here. See, on this one, you may almost pull back the attack on that upper mid-range, just to kind of almost like compressing it, right? So instead of increasing sustain, reducing the transient, and then maybe still boost a little bit of sustain as well. Let's hear it before and after again. Here's with it. Now, the next plugin in my chain is an LA-2A, I'm pretty sure. I got a chain here with the LA-2A and then the custom opto. I'm not going to lie, I'm probably still going to use that. Maybe even some parallel compression and actually, yeah, they're off. They're off for a reason. You heard the difference between that bass. I mean, that's just insane. So, let's come out here where it maybe is plucking along. My sub pack just had an orgasm. <laughs> All right. We're going to put that away. We're going to come back to it at the event. You're going to see me open this up and mix a full bass. But I just, I had to show off this multi pass. Just incredible, man. I'm going to put this back at the detent position. And uh, for now, we're going to walk away from the bass. Go ahead and delete that guy. And we'll come back to it when we mix the full song on Friday. All right. Let's move on. So, uh, I think the next thing that we really, um, that I didn't show off in the last video showing off the template, creating the template, was the uh, the vocal effects. If you've seen any of my stuff for a long time, you know I love to layer chorus, doubler effects, um, Haas effects, stereo effects, a um, little bit of slap delay, some delays in verb. I like to shape that. Very similar tools for almost every mix that I do but in varying ways. So a pop mix, I'm probably going to use a little more uh, doubler chorus, especially at the chorus where I needed to really cut or sit on top. Um, I've got this blossoming effect. We're going to dive in and look at all of those. And to do that, we're going to let uh, MJ help us out. Still continue on. If you didn't see the MJ series, Mixing Michael Jackson, we did a six-part series. I showed off my entire mix, looking to to honor the Bruce, Mr. Bruce Wadeen, his original mix but uh, also to, to kind of showcase the uh, the tools and how I did that. So uh, definitely check that out. Let's go ahead and let's look. So we already talked about, so we had EQ, we you know swapped out my FabFilter Pro Q3 for the Infinity EQ all across the board for this live stream event. Uh, VMR, it's very similar to what I use. I got a layer of saturation plugins that I can turn on and use whatever I need to go to. Um, pretty standard compression stuff here, 1176 into an LA-2A. But the, the on the MJ track, I actually didn't even use that. All I used was parallel compression. And this is my go-to. The Slate Distressor is just incredible. And uh, having a blast using this one for, geez, probably since it came out. I think it, it landed on my vocal parallel chain, and it's been there ever since. So we're going to look. We're going to plug. Let's see how much. Yeah, 10 dB of reduction almost all the time and that's uh pretty standard now i tell you what let's put a little eq on him it's a little dull right there right shame on me just give a little top end that's probably fine for example's sake so what we want to talk about we already covered swapping out the compressors we got fresh air here that i could have engaged right there and and used for the top end <laughs> Yeah, so there we go. We got a little fresh air. We got our compression happening. We got the blend. <laughs> what you don't want to do is you don't want that parallel chain to just completely overtake your vocal. Because then what's the point of parallel compression? You just, just smash the original vocal with tons of compression. But uh, for example's sake, we're going to move quick. We have the EQ coming over here. Just as a quick recap, my vocal chain is I have a lead vocal track. I'll hit it with EQ, compression, de-essing, saturation, whatever I want here. That sends into this send right here to the vocal crush, which is the distressor, parallel compression, fast attack, fast release, 
um, just really aggressive compression. Then we blend that to taste. Both of these tracks meet at the lead vocal level. So they're both output. You see here, lead vocal level, lead vocal level. The input of the lead vocal level. And then that's where I'll hit it with a little more EQ, maybe a little more compression. Maybe that's where I start to shape a vocal. I'll automate some effects or that kind of stuff. But what we're talking about right now is we've got these David Glenn template vocal effects. And this is just uh, my go-to and has been my, my go-to chain for years. And it's time we have swapped out the plugins. Kind of what inspired this whole series, quick rabbit trail, very short rant. Um, I have the Apollo Twin Mark II, huge Universal Audio fan for many, many years. I had two Octo cards fry, and uh, they were no good anymore, uh, out of warranty, so all that down the drain. And then uh, my Apollo Twin has been faithful to me for however long now, but the outputs are fried, so I can still use it. You guys are hearing the audio through the Apollo Twin as a digital interface, but I cannot physically use the output, so I can't plug in headphones or monitors to it the outputs are completely fried and i gotta send it off and pay to get it replaced so um that kind of inspired me to look at what else is out there i'm sick of being tied down to the little bit of frustration coming out uh to the plugins and the it's I'm, i used to have unlimited ua you know i had three octo cards at one point and then the twin and um then i was down to just a duo dsp Oh, so done with that, moved on and brought us to creating this template and hosting this live event, which I think is going to be a blast, by the way, link in the description. Um, but that really is what kind of led me. Most of my vocal effects were um, Dimension D, the Cooper Time Cube, um, stereo and mono instances of both. And I just said, you know what, let me go. So the last video, I went to show off swapping those out. And I thought, man, I've... This is like it's heartfelt for me to work with those UA modulation plugins for how many, you know, seven, eight years now. I don't even know how long it's been. And so I was like, let me go off camera, experiment, A, B, find the ones that work. And I, I nailed it. So now let's show it off. Rant over. We're, uh, we're going to show off these. So same names. I didn't change the, the titles or anything. But the Gentle Chorus. Actually, this one used to be the um, Isotope Nectar. Just a simple, slow chorus. And so you've got the rate. I mean, that's maybe a little bit medium, but the depth is low, and uh, it's just full-on beauty. So let's take a listen to Michael Jackson, Here's Without It, and then we'll blend it in. <laughs> for 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on the side. But who can stand when she's in demand? Her schemes and plans. So right there is maybe where I would have a pop vocalist, you know, a modern pop track lots of that gentle chorus because it's so slow it's not like you know warbly or anything like that we're going to be able to get away with using a little bit more of that i don't care if it's a hip-hop vocal i'm almost always blending at least a little bit of that and it helps kind of elevate the vocal as well so the vocal is going to get louder but i'm going to boost and overemphasize the effect so you can hear what's happening and then we'll put it down and then we'll turn it all off at the end obviously this is not in context it's just you know a soloed vocal to show off the template but uh this guy here man Less is more. It's exactly what I needed for this effect. So one more time, we'll pull it up. <laughs> for forty days and for forty nights, I was on the side. But who can stand when she's in the man? So just a little silky texture. It's all I'm going for there, and it's actually exactly what I'm going for in the next one, which is just a varied form of uh, that last one. So a slightly different rate, three taps instead of two, and here's the. Mono Dimension D, we're gonna call it. <laughs> for 40 days and for 40 nights. So that one's a little more aggressive. It's not quite what the Mono Dimension D is gonna be. Maybe mode three or four is a little more aggressive. Um, so I'm gonna be using probably less of this one, but just another little varying layer to kind of throw in there. Let's see again. <laughs> for 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on the side. But who can stand when she's in the man? Schemes and plans. Yep, so a little bit of that. This is my favorite vocal effect. It's the Cooper Time Cube vocal dimension preset, and I have recreated it with the amazing repeater. Incredible plugin. I love the color and the knobs and all this. It kind of prevents you from stacking other plugins on that, you know, saturation and all that. 
Uh, you've got the spreading feature if you want. You've got the analog vibe. I think darkens it a little bit. Um, but let's uh, go ahead and explain what this does. So let's listen to Michael Jackson with and without this effect. Let me put it in, and then we'll explain what it's doing. You'll probably already know from, from listening to it, but here we go. Okay, so one more time. Here's in. And it's just, it's that hyper real studio pop blossoming of the vocal, right? So I'm going to take that dry vocal that's just sitting right down the middle, which maybe in your verses, you, you want it to stay there. You want it to be kind of that intimate, more raw sound. But then at the chorus, you automate something like this on. It's just, for me, it kind of takes it from that just right down the middle, perfectly mono, and expands it. But it's not like a stereo Dimension D or a stereo doubler where you're getting this kind of wide, doubled vocal kind of thing. It feels like the same vocalist, just kind of more chesty, expanding out and kind of taking over the track right down the middle. This is just... This is one of my favorite vocal effects that uh, will help. If you've got a vocal that's compressed, it's sitting pretty good, and you just need that little extra more, I mean, even like 20%, 30% to help it expand, this is what you're going to go to. Let me show off that. Plug in the settings again. Take a screenshot of that. Five milliseconds on the left. And you can use your stock delay, you know, full disclaimer here. Five seconds on, five milliseconds on the left, 20.3 on the right. And these are the exact settings from the Cooper Time Cube. Look at that. Coopy Cube is the delay model in the repeater just incredible that we got this as part of the all access pass feedbacks at zero um no high pass no low pass no color um not looking to to shape it in that way necessarily um could if we wanted to but i just i want that that expansion that kind of i used to say it's kind of like you go from a cardioid to a hypercardioid or just something that gives you a little more right down the middle so let's do this so what i'll do for for one more time here to show you with it off and then we'll pull it back in. For 40 days and for 40 nights I was on the side But who can stand when she's in the man Her schemes and plans Come and dance on the floor and around I mean, even just a little bit goes a long way. But like I said, don't, don't shy away from this. Automate it at the maybe the B section you put a little bit in and then at the chorus hit it with a ton of it, and it's just your vocals is going to take over. I think like Kate, old school Katy Perry stuff, it's weird to say old school Katy Perry, but um, that Ariana Grande, that pop stuff, right, where you just need that vocal to have a, a texture and you want it to sit on top a little bit more, great effect for that. So moving on, we're showing off the Stereo Dimension D replacement, which yet again is a uh, repeater. And so I did stack a widening plugin on the back end of it. We'll look at that uh, in a second, but just 21 milliseconds, and this is the vocal widener. So just shopping around, looking at the different all-access pass plugins. It didn't take me long. And we do have a little color in this one, boosting a little mid-range, was having some fun experimenting with that. Um, but again, just that spreader. This is that wide stereo effect. So let's let's turn everything off, and we'll feature just the stereo dimension D. Here's with it off, and we'll blend it in. <laughs> Do you hear how that effect may be more fitting at a chorus as a layer, right? The last one, it didn't shoot out, you know, Michael's voice super wide. It expanded right down the middle and kind of took over the middle. This one is definitely coming in wide. And I've got a widener on it, an imager plugin, just throwing out some more width. The stereo plugin from uh, Slate's All Access Pass, the Kilohertz bundle. Uh, let's listen to the difference. Uh, here's the Cooper Dimension again. We'll enhance it a bit. Right in here. That's out here, right? Come and dance on the floor and around. So layered, you can get some cool effects. Uh, I definitely use the Stereo Dimension D more in the chorus, automate that at the chorus, um, but fun one there as well. So let's go back and put, this guy was down probably a little lower. 
I mean, shoot, let's blend in some of this for... Yeah, a little bit goes a long way. And then we'll turn it off and we'll come back to it. The mono slap delay. This one I was really... Man, I was cheesing over this one. Uh, again, repeater. But I'm a huge Valhalla fan. I love plugins. I'm a, I'm a plugin junkie. I've got gas. I'm, I'm in it with most of you guys watching this back. You gear acquisition syndrome it's a thing and uh a lot of us struggle from it but i'm telling you what i'm very excited to get in and mix without thinking what plugin am i, am I going to use or going through the plugin list and uh, that's a that's a creative suck if i'm honest and so looking at the uh the valhalla i was like well for this event let me see how can i swap that out I, the last video i was like i don't know if i'm going to be able to emulate that with just one plugin i think i'm gonna have to stack 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 right I think I did it. Let's take a listen. So here is, uh, and I know we're not comparing directly up against the Valhalla, but um, dang it, man. I was super pumped to uh, to arrive at this result. So let's go, I'd say, let's put that away. There it is, mono slap. So it'll be off and then I'll pull it in. Now on the back end of repeater, I do have um, some EQ, I like to filter a little bit for the slap delay. I don't want it to be an exact copy slapping back of the lead vocal. I like to have a little character. Uh, so my template, I have a, High pass, low cut, and a high cut, high uh, high cut, low pass. So both ends of the spectrum. I just need to choose. Am I going to call it a high cut, low pass, or am I going to call it a high pass? Whatever. Low cut makes more sense. Low cut and high cut. That's what we're going to stick with from now on. And then three to five k. If you've got uh, you're struggling with harsh mixes, definitely check out your three to five k use. Anytime I boost around that range, I'm almost always with a bell pulling back and dipping. I got a great video. Um, Helped a lot of people, a lot of feedback on that one uh, on my channel. How to prevent harsh mixes, I think it's called, and it's mostly about managing that three to five k range. So there's the EQ on the back end of repeater. Let's pull some of it in right here, and hear what it sounds like. Now you can play with the the time. So 90 to maybe 120 seconds or so uh, milliseconds is going to be your 120 seconds. 90 to 120 milliseconds is going to be your kind of range of a slap delay. Beyond that, it gets into you know 16th notes and that kind of thing. But um, a cool thing that I found with this is it's very similar if you guys have ever used a like a crushed distorted um, drum mic room mic and so you maybe you create one and you send the kick and the snare and the toms the shells of the kit to a sans amp or a guitar amp or something you send the drums to an amp and then you hit it with a little decapitator or whatever distortion slates London really good New York is great on this effect um, so you hit it with some some character some distortion and then you just blend a little bit in behind the kick snare um, balance. And it just for almost all genres, man, that's a great little effect to, to add some some point to the, the drums. But um, definitely on rock, you may even use more of it. This is kind of that effect for the vocal for me, where I'm getting a little bit of that kind of mid-range character. Again, we're not in context here, so we're not going to pull it in and, and be able to really hear the character. But it makes a huge difference to have some some shape to the slap. Um, and not just be a full body. I mean, here's the difference between that. It's probably going to make a little bit of a difference. <laughs> so we still get the EQ, the character, but it's a little more tame. Uh, so you may not want that in some instances. The other thing you may notice is 1K kind of 800 hertz to 2k is a sweet spot for depending upon the vocalist and the range and where they're singing but um what i like to do sometimes as well is to pull out that range so that the lead vocal still stays on top and you kind of shape the slap delay you sculpt it around it instead of it being dominant and so with the filtered effect this may be this may go a long way let's check this one out there's boosting <laughs> That's claustrophobic to me. So in a mix, maybe in a section as an effect, it might be a cool thing. Maybe you automate that feedback to shoot real, you know, long and crazy, and that could be cool. But it just, it feels like it just overtakes the vocal. I don't want that in most cases. So let's go from this, and we're going to pull down a little bit. 
days and in the four at night, night. I was on the side. But who can stand when she's in the man, her schemes and plans? Do you hear how that lead vocal went from, you know, super affected with the slap delay to more chill to now the lead vocal is the dominant source again? It's back on top and the slap delay is kind of gently, you know, behind it. So obviously that's kind of the 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 meat of the vocal is in that frequ frequency range. So you could just pull back the slap delay's volume, but I like shaping it with EQ as well. You can uh, be a little more surgical with it. So we'll put this guy away. Actually, it might even just, nah, instinct. We'll go back to it. So, all right. So slap delay, pretty cool looking at that. Let's hear it. For 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on the side. Just a little bit. And we're moving on. So let me actually check in. It's been a minute since I've... Uh, Seeing if you guys have any questions about anything we're talking about with the, the template or the event coming up or mixing in general, man, feel free. Hit me in the comments and uh, I'll get back to every single comment. So having a blast working through the template. And next up is my DG vocal delay. I'm a guitarist and a longtime fan of um, U2, The Edge and his dotted eighth and the, the amps, you know, the AC 20s, 20 feet apart, getting a little bit of that millisecond delay from that and then um eighth on the left dotted eighth on the right kind of thing uh done that for a long time and i uh, took that you know my love for that delay sound and brought it into a uh, a vocal template and you can see here just an eighth on the left a dotted eighth on the right a little bit of color a little bit of uh high cut a little bit of low cut and uh, we've kind of shaped this to be my DG vocal delay. If I am going for space on a vocal and I don't really want that kind of wet uh, reverb sound, this is the one that I'm going to go to and I'm going to tinker with this and tweak it to taste. But let's get this one in. You guys can hear what this is doing. <laughs> for 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on the side. But who can stand when he's in the man, her schemes and plans? Go and dance on the floor and around. So take my strong advice. Just remember to always think twice. There we go. So that was a little more tailored. Get the <laughs> tweak disease, we'll call it. But uh, yeah, just a little bit goes a long way with that one too. And we're going to play all these back and then we'll turn them off. You can hear what the difference is between just little bits. Goes a long way stacking these effects. <laughs> Just prevents it from being wet right down the middle. So next up, I've used for the longest time the EMT vocal plate from UA. Um, and, well, we'll come back to that. We'll show that off next. But we have the, oh, we'll come back to that. We'll show that off after the, the first plug-in. The reverb itself is the vocal plate. The Bricasti plates, vocal plate, 1.6 seconds, and we'll manipulate that. Um, uh, that's all the way up. So I may actually copy over another plate sound that can go further because I, I, I do like my vocal plate to go anywhere from this 1.5 to 3 and 4 seconds on a ballad even and then shape it and automate different lines up and down, that kind of thing. But for now, this is what I came up with, and that uh, sounds great. So let's blend in a little bit of this, and then I'll show off those first plugins that uh, I teased you with. <laughs> for 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on the side. But who can stand when she's in the man, her schemes and plans? Go and dance on the floor and around. <laughs> so take my strong advice. So I'm going to back off the EQ there a little bit because I'm using the EQ built into the verb suite. Let's, <laughs> let's boost the top and see. <laughs> Days and the forty nights, I was on the side. But who can stand when she's in the man, her schemes and plans? Go and dance on the floor and around. <laughs> yeah, so definitely uh, tweakable, and these are brand new to my template, so it's going to take some time, some mixes where I'm going to tweak them and adjust to taste. But uh, you can hear just a great sounding reverb. Now, what did I have in front? The first plugin is a de -esser. I, uh, in my template, prefer to control S's from hitting the reverb. Now, there are times where I'll copy S's down from the lead vocal, and I'll send that to its own reverb, and I'll have the S's spill out into some 
decay, some verb. But traditionally, generally speaking, I want those out. And so I don't want um, the sibilance to trigger reverb spill. And so the first plug-in here is a de to make sure that, um, in this case, MJ's voice is not s -s 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 triggering s s's into, uh, into oblivion there. Let's take a listen to 40 Days there. Days and night. Days and before the night. Days and before the night. Days and Mr. S. Days and before the night. 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 So it's a pretty mild difference here in this particular case, but typically, especially female pop type stuff. Um, ballads where they're just, I don't know, get that top in. You really are boosting in there. We haven't done too much here. Uh, it's it's a great thing to have to keep those in check. And so that's my first plug-in in my uh, lead vocal reverb. Next up, we've got an EQ. And you saw I backed off because traditionally I'll have maybe six, 6K, 600 hertz, kind of in that Abbey Road EQ effect. Um, but in this case, I wanted a little more. So opened it up because I'm using a different reverb different style sound. I already had top in. We shaped it a little bit, but this is just for uh, sculpting. Sometimes I'll get in here and pull out three to five K. Excuse me. And uh, it's just there for me to tweak if I need it. So there is my lead vocal chain. Now this video is going well. Uh, it's, it's pretty much over because what I do is I take my vocal effects and I basically duplicate them for instruments. And so what I'll do is I'll send if I, you know, I come to like that Cooper Dimension chesty vocal effect, if I have a guitar solo or something that I need it to cut even more, or pop out or expand out of the middle, I like to use that same effect. So I just have a different one created for that same. And actually, looks like I forgot to do that. So what I'm going to do is copy this one especially, because I know I use that a ton on lead licks, lead acoustics, lead piano, anything that I need a little bit more from. I'm going to uh, maybe even break out into its own track and do this effect. So I'm going to duplicate this, everything about it. And then we're going to come down here and put that just below the chorus there. Label it I for instrument. Get rid of the that. And it's going to be the exact same effect, except now we got to give it a different routing. So we're going to say, we'll come here and just three and four. Right click, rename I. If I could type, mic in the way, coop them, bam. And then now I've got that available to me, and it's not, you know, maybe the other one I manipulate the EQ for the vocal. I like my vocal effects to be vocal effects. I don't like to send a bunch of other stuff into them and overwhelm the plugin or, you know, whatever I like to have. Maybe it's just OCD. I don't know. But there you go. So that was one. Um, and then the slap to laser. A uh, cool trick. I do this all the time for uh, background vocalists and anything where I just want a little bit of extra. Sometimes I'll hard pan to the left, a guitar, but I want a little bit of it on the right. And so I'll send it to the slap right. And so now you get the guitar on the left. It's hard pan, but it kind of shifts it a little bit. So it's not just out there by itself. You get a little bit of it on the other side. Um, could be a cool way. It's a very CLA effect is to have that sent to the slap delay. It's hard pan and then send to an effect like the slap delay. And so I've just used the, the kilohertz, and then I have used Infinity EQ on the back end to filter out. Don't need all the bottom end and all the mid-range and all the top of every single sound, source, and effect. So a little bit of filtering here to help clean it up. And then beyond that, we have our room sounds, which I think were already in place before. These were already slate plugs for me. We've got the live club, one second. Um, you can see the EQ and stuff there. Again, the filters are in place. Um, in this case, dipping out upper mid-range. Same thing for this Sunset Chamber. This is one of the most beautiful reverbs. Uh, and thankfully, it's in Verb Suite Classics under the Bricasti emulations. And you've got the Sunset Chamber IR right there. So that and then Ice House. This replaced my ginormous hall kind of sound. Just a long, right now it's at three seconds, but that often gets boosted to seven seconds, eight seconds in a mix. It just depends on what we're doing. Um, you can see those settings there. Kind of blasting through this. The Subsplash. Oh, man. I don't know. I think I've done a video on the subsplash. If I haven't, 
I'm pretty sure I have. Um, so I think we're going to skip talking about this one right now, but, uh, I'll, I'll describe it I, or not. I was thinking maybe I pull in and show it, show it off, pull in a, uh, a kick or something and show you guys what it is. But the long and short of it is it's a very long decaying reverb. And, uh, if I find a moment in the track where I want to automate a little extra bottom in into the song, into the mix, I will, um, highlight a kick, highlight a Tom fill, the last hit of the floor, Tom in a Tom fill, and I'll turn, automate the mute sending into the sub splash. And it's going to create that doom, super deep kind of decaying sub drop. And then there's the EQ for it. So we've got 100 hertz and above is uh, is gone. 100 hertz and below is boosted. Pretty uh, ginormous sounding effect. And then I'll go in depending upon the song and I may open it up and let 200 hertz so that a little bit of the smaller speakers feels it extend a bit. Um, it just depends on the song, but that is a blast to use. I wouldn't say every mix, but I'm, I'm hunting for it. And it, it's kind of second nature at this point. Whenever I hear something that could benefit from the sub splash, man, I, I love to pull that open and, uh, do it. Let me grab some tea here in my throat. Mm. Gotta love throat coat. All right, let's check in. We got any comments, any questions? Hey guys, man, don't be shy. Feel free, hit me with any questions. And if you're watching this back, the replay, feel free, drop a comment. Let me know if you got any questions. Help me make some future content that you guys want to see. You have a question about anything I covered here, I'll make sure I'll answer every comment in the comment section. So that was a sub splash. And I think that was it, guys. We wrap it up. We looked at the all buses. We talked about the Slate compressors, the Kilo Hearts, uh, saving the day with the imaging plugin like the boost on the the music bus we got our got everything that we need man incredible value in that bundle and uh super pumped to be able to to have broken this down now what's the point of doing this video well we're doing a free live event if you guys haven't already man sign up check out the link in the description it's a free event it's going to go from a um the mix prep will be done i'm going to do that video on thursday but friday we're going live picking up from the mix prep we're doing an entire mix together you're going to see everything involved in the mixing process, all my decision making, what works, what doesn't. You get in, you start blending these effects and this kind of stuff, and maybe it doesn't work out. That's okay. You're going to see me switch gears and solve problems, and we're going to deliver mix one as if we're sending it to the client. It's going to be an incredible time, free live event. Check out the link in the description below. And uh, you know what I did forget to do is show off the effects on and off. I was, took all that time to make sure that I had a little bit of each of them in there. And mother always told me. I and uh, I didn't show off the ice house, but you just saw that's a, a longer sustaining uh, reverb. We're not going to use that one on this particular mix, but let's go ahead and turn everything on and then I'll turn it off. And mother always told me, I be careful who you love. And be careful what to do. I could the lie become the truth. Hey, the Billy Jean is not my love. Yeah, so in context, that may sound good, it may not, and we would tweak it and whatever, but just kind of showing off how just dry and empty it sounds, and then larger than life, it kind of expands and shoot, man. Had a blast hanging out with you guys today. Don't forget, free live event. Also, if you haven't already, I've got a free guide for you. Fix it in the mix. It's not ideal to have to fix anything in the mix, but the fact of the matter is, all the time, every mix, we're having to fix something. And so this guy's going to help you deal with less than ideal tracks, average, even poor recordings, and help you take them and deliver something that's still radio worthy. So fix it in the mix. Dot, is it fix it in the mix.com? I got to learn my own links, but the link will be in the description for that as well. Man, thank you guys so much. The live guys hanging out with me. Uh, let me check in. We got some. Da, da, da. Yes, George's. Every single plugin you saw in this video was from Slate Digital's All Access Pass, the Kilo Hearts bundle, the multi-pass, um, the imaging, a couple of those, uh, the delays and chorus effects, some of those, um, they're, they're included with All Access Pass. That's the um, uh, Kilo Hearts bundle, incredible company. And uh, man, I'm, I'm new to them, but having a blast featuring those plugins here. So definitely, man. Hey, for you guys who missed it, there's the replay. Just go back and watch it. Drop me a comment. Let me know. And uh, I'm going to try to be going live at least once a week from now on. But uh, need to hear from you guys. What do you want to see here at the Mix Academy? What kind of content do you want me to create for you? Uh, we're going to be hanging out a ton. 
Like I said, we have content for days already mapped out, bringing on some new contributors. It's going to be an incredible time. We're going to be looking at recording soon. I'm so pumped. For the longest time, I've just focused on mixing. Got a couple courses around producing and recording, but uh, on the channel here, I very seldom talk about recording, which if I'm going to talk about fixing it in the mix, shame on me for not also showing you how to record it well. So we're going to bring on a couple of people and be doing that soon. So definitely excited to get them in going. Let's see. Anthony, yes, the template will be available. Um, so the live event will go from, what is it, 11 a.m. all day. Um, that night, I'm taking the template, and it's going to be available for Pro Tools immediately. And then we're going to get the uh, Logic, Cubase, Reaper, Studio One, oh, man, Ableton, and on and on. There's like seven or eight other, you know, templates that we're going to have ready for you guys. And I want to say, let me, probably the weekend. So for Friday, we're live, Saturday, Sunday, by Monday, I would say all the templates should be up and uh, we'll be ready to go on that. But the all the extra stuff is going to be, yeah, you'll learn more about that when you check out the registration page. But uh, it's going to be incredible. And the multi-tracks and all that's going to be made available to the, um, uh, if you purchase the all access pass, but more on that on the page, you guys rock. So pumped to have you with me. Uh, again, drop me a comment, man. Would love. We're going to be doing a mixed critique video. I'm filming that tonight uh, before bed. And then uh, that'll be up for those of you who are in the VIP membership, which is closed right now. But keep an eye for when that opens up. We're going to be doing the mixed critiques, um, reviewing all of our members' mixes and posting them on the channel so you guys can learn from how I'm evaluating mixes and other people's arrangements and that kind of stuff so man so much to come thank you guys for hanging out with me the live audience those of you guys watching it back hey if you made it to this part uh, and you're watching live or the replay man drop me a comment let me know that you made it would love to uh, chat with you there and we'll see you guys on many more to come thanks again we'll see you next time <laughs>